you have a unique opportunity to look inside your own being. being, 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 being. You're neither the breath nor the mind play because you're able to watch the breath, to watch the senses, to watch what you call ego. The body is only a product of consciousness and his consciousness is a form of consciousness. This instrument is here to help you to wake up to who you are. If you don't wake up to who you are in this body, then this body is merely the pajamas of the being. They are sleeping in it. seconds in. What's watching this? Seven seconds out. Counting and watching. What is doing this? See, not this breath. The mind also, you say, the mind flow now is shaking. The tree of the mind is shaking. Huh? What watch is this? Oh, I'm feeling a bit emotional. What's watching this? Watch the weakness. Can you watch the weakness? What weakness is weakness? Can anyone speak about it? When you're here, no descriptions will fit you. You're home beyond even the concept of home. sense of a choice. Let the attention go with the pull of the mind, the mind flow to go, which then scatters it into so many noisy places. Or you hold the attention inside that stillness. Everything is taking place from here. Everything funnels into here. already a lot of stuff is burning from it. Space again. Right? Your viewing becomes open and panoramic. There's space and there's silence in this. So come to this place first. There are no references now. Then something says, stay here. It's addressing an attention. The attention somehow must stay here for a bit. And then the attention which is trembling to go out, because that's the reflex is to go out to you know familiar territory, because it's used to hanging out in the realm of the noise. And now it's, it takes some effort to hold it here, and it's like it's, it wants to go out. But that's also watched. And this is a very, very uh, important point. This pull. It's like, yeah, but it's so easy. Then I go back again. You're talking about your attention. It goes out again to something that is, feels familiar to, to the I-ness, the me-ness story. And again, watched from the awareness self itself. It's allowed to pull back. It comes back in and it stays. And each time it goes out, it stays less long. It comes back in again. And it goes out. It comes back in again. And it's here. And no questions will come. Now you are the very embodiment of truth. All of this life, as you have seen it, occurred inside your own consciousness. You are the one perceiving it. on telling the 
story of the changes that manifest in front of you. This thing happened of the yesterdays and the yesteryears and the todays and the tomorrows. You can keep on talking, but it's all phenomenal without you. of all that arises. Without you, what is life for you?
I can see the pain on my younger brother's face. He's got these battles fighting every day. But if one thing only leads to another, then what is the point of fighting it? Cause if the tables turn on you, you can turn it right back round again. Don't be merely satisfied with other people's thoughts, or even your own thoughts. What is the weakness of that? That which weaknesses them? In whose presence they appear? Who is this? Already Feel it. Free my IJ. You have to find out. Feel it. So don't hesitate, my sister.
thinking where you are, thinking who you are. And this is your kingdom that you must transcend to understand. You must transcend it. In the middle of that sea, you must hold your ground. It will soon be over. When that season pass, uh, a great space opens up. Opens up.
question who am I is more intimate than who is God. What recognizes the changing costumes of I. There comes a time when it is seen that all this diversity springs out of one unicity. That is the one somehow manifesting as all this apparent diversity relating to itself as otherness and then coming to find that all this otherness springs out of one unicity which is its own self. This understanding can come and will come. don't have an investment in the sense of separateness, then you may find that it springs up in you quite naturally. An intuitive knowing that everything arises from one common source. And that source cannot be placed away from my intuitive sense of what I am. How can I be other than the source? You see? Maybe like this it will come to you. Maybe like this it will come to you. The question who am I? The question who am I is more intimate than who is God. What recognizes the changing costumes of I? What sees it? Clearly it is perceivable. So the evidence that there is some power, deeper power of perception that is capable of perceiving even I is already there. What is this? Different from you? questions are more intimate, more fundamental than who is God. Perhaps in coming to some deep understanding within yourself, that question will also be answered for you in a way that is without argument. The question who am I is more intimate than who is God. is the most unsparing question, the most ruthless, at exposing the ego as completely a myth. What recognizes the changing costumes of I? What sees it? If you ask the question, who is God, and I could give the greatest answer that is going to be satisfying for you, for how long will it be satisfying? It's here right now. Where else to be? That which causes the speaking and the listening and the comprehending to take place. Presenting itself as human nature. So therefore the human being, even the most arrogant one, is also an expression of the consciousness. All 
the behavior on the planet is a function of consciousness. At a certain time, a part of its play also is to fall completely in love with itself. It's only fascinated with only what itself is. It turns away from other. That is called auspiciousness. When it turns its attention away from the sense of other and to look towards the source from where others or the sense others spring, even from where the sense I spring, then it is in a unity space. Nothing can stop it. Nothing can stop it. Sing a It's just sort of sensing the opportunity and seeing the complete auspiciousness when something inside you moves back into yourself. That's all. Something simply just flow out of pure joy. It all boils down only to this point. Just be clear about who you are. And just like now, you are aware that you are conscious. You are aware of this consciousness. That the consciousness itself is not personal. But somehow it can manifest by identifying with the body it feels itself to be personal. Now this is recognized that the personal self with all its history, all its psychology, all of that is also a phenomenon on the screen of consciousness. What watches this screen? The screen of consciousness. There is a current, a current of A recognition is making itself felt inside your being. An intuitive sense of something that is timeless is making itself known. It will not come as long as you are preoccupied with something which is preoccupied with the apparent known. It says, okay, you play on, it's okay. But something now, having shrunk back from holding on to objects, now it is the subject is kind of holding on to subject. And then this lovely announcement is taking place. An intuitive sense and beyond all of this. itself in some exquisite insight and this is different from merely head knowledge because this is your own direct experience what it means it means no one can take it away from you it's not grafting on 
to your head what is in my head. It is somehow a seeing that is born within its own self. So for this purpose I say the emphasis is on your discovery. We will walk alongside each other talking about it, but the experiencing is entirely your own. If I am that, what observes that? Don't think. Experience it. Look and trust yourself in this looking. Trust what is there and feel the fruit of your looking. When you recognize that which is recognized, the body-mind functioning, immediately there is a silence in you. When it is discovered, all your miseries are over. All your anxieties are over. If you're prone to feelings of depression, it's over. Reveal thyself, your true inner self. Come let it grow, let it show, let it flow. And we are that. We are that. We are that.
To be a human being, to have a human body is a tremendously auspicious gift. Great opportunity. So don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. Intelligence says, find it now, not later. Find it now. You go for gold. So 
You're not just flesh and blood. You're not on this planet merely to pay rent. But there's a higher power inside. The mind derives its strength from your attention, from your interest, and your belief. From your attention, from your interest. belongs to you to know who you are, that you're not just flesh and blood, that you're not just flesh and blood, that there's a higher power inside. I say, all thoughts originally are equal in weightlessness. They require belief and interest in order to give them muscle, weight, and power. attention. If you withdraw this attention, you take their power away. They will kick and scream in the beginning, maybe, but the power is reduced by this. It belongs to you to know who you are, that you're not just flesh and blood. It is a higher power inside. You're not just flesh and blood. You're not just flesh and blood, but there's a higher power inside. At a certain point, nothing will arrest your attention so forcefully. The mind becomes peaceful, silent, empty, spacious. Sometimes it's as though the thoughts are auditioning for your attention. And if they get it, then somehow they come to life for you in your world. If they don't get it, they again subside into pure emptiness. It belongs to you to know who you are, that you're not just flesh and blood. That you're not just flesh and blood, but there's a higher power inside. Whatever concepts you believe in, you believe into existence. And then you press enter and you're in. You log in to your own concepts and they become realities for you. 